Hey guys, Nadja here. Welcome back to my channel. Many of you know that I was displaced and um, had to leave my home because of the chemical fire that took place in Conyers, Georgia about four days ago now. And so I came to my parents' house. I've been here ever since. I'm going home today though, okay? And so I'm in my parents' lovely uh, guest bedroom in their basement. And um, I know I haven't done like an official like teaching in a while. And so I was like, I got to come in here and do this video today, guys. I know there's a lot that's happening right now. There's a lot of people that need encouragement. There's a lot of people that need some guidance and direction. Um, and so the word that I am going to be given today was given to me on September the 20th. And um, it started me out discussing about the Jubilee. Okay, of course, we know we are still in the year of Jubilee which is in Leviticus 27, 24, it talks about in the year of Jubilee that the field shall return to him from when it was bought to the one who owned the land as a possession. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with um, the year of Jubilee, this is the year where what was stolen from you, uh, from the enemy, God is returning to his rightful owner, okay? Um. The Lord is allowing a lot of people. We're at the end of the year. However, we are, it's October. We literally have three months left in this year. And so you know how God works. There are times where the Lord will allow you to get to the very end, okay, before you start receiving those uh, guidance from the Lord to cross over. That it's time for you as in as Israel did crossing the Jordan in Joshua 3. He will tell you when it's time. Now, I will say this. There are many people who are waiting for the direction to cross over, waiting for even understanding what that looks like. But there are several things within ourselves that have not been corrected. There are several things within ourselves that we need to make sure that we are seeking the Lord on to be healed. For many of us, it's our heart. I am dealing with the same thing, okay? There are certain parts of me that Lord has revealed. Your heart got to get right, all the way right, before I put you in position, before I give you back what was stolen. Because if your heart isn't right or certain parts of you is not right and you receive it before time, then you're going to give it back to the devil. And it may not be intentional, but you're going to give it back to the devil, you're going to give him legal right to come back in and take what God gave you. Now, when he does give you guidance to cross over, as it says in Joshua 3, 7, they rested in the waters of the Jordan to mark the beginning of the Israelites crossing into the promised land. This day, the Lord said, I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel. So they will know as I was with Moses, I am also with you. So here, this goes back to what I just stated about your heart. Okay, in 1 Samuel eleven thirteen, at the beginning of Saul's reign, his attitude was one of humility and graciousness. He was valiant, giving honor due to the Lord. The spirit of the Lord had come upon Saul in order to enable him to rule God's people. Okay, so in order for the spirit of the Lord to come upon us so that we can operate properly within our calling. There are certain things that have to be taken care of. There are certain things that we have to work towards. So some of you may already be in that space. Some of you may have already gotten to um, the waters and you're crossing over. Or some of you may have already crossed over, and this may be a reminder to make sure that as you are in this space, to make sure that you are um, you are stewarding properly, okay? That you remain in a space of humility and graciousness. If you are wanting the Spirit of the Lord to lead, which if you're a believer, that's the only spirit that you should want to lead, okay? To make sure that you're remaining in a certain heart, heart posture while operating within this gift. For many of you, you're going to be receiving this information. You're going to be moving into a new position, um, crossing the Jordan. 
getting back what was stolen in the midst of judgment coming around you. And what God gave as an example of when this happened was in um, 2 Kings 25, 28. Jehoshaphat, when he was released from prison, God's judgment had to come. But even in judgment, God's mercy was abundant as a foretaste of the nation's future deliverance according to God's promise. The king gave him more prominent position Okay, he gave him a more prominent position and changed him from his prison garments and he ate bread regularly. Okay, many of you are being increased in your positions, whether it's ministry, whether it is a thank you, Holy Spirit, your position in in a home. Okay, meaning becoming a wife or becoming a husband. That is a ministry. Your first ministry is your home, your family life. And for many of you, it could be an actual position in the work, in the workplace, in the marketplace, in the field. Now, once you get into this, these positions and you begin to start building for the Lord, okay, you have to make sure that you are um, staying focused on what God told you to do and not allowing yourself to be distracted by uh unclean spirits that desire to just come and distract and pull you away from the purpose that God has for you. The things he's giving back, the crossing over is not for you and your comfortability, but it's for his purpose. It is for the sake of the kingdom. These assignments are weighty. So in Nehemiah 6, where it talks about the conspiracy against Nehemiah, Sambalat, Tobiah, and Geshem, the Arab and the rest of our enemies heard that I had rebuilt the wall. They sent me saying, come, let us meet together among the villages in the plain. But they thought to do me harm. Okay. Nehemiah sent messengers saying, I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why? Should the work cease while I leave it and come down to you? So see, there will be people that will try to get you off course from what you've been doing to be obedient to the Lord. And while you are busy within that purpose and calling, there will be people that will try to pull you away from that. And it says, but they sent the message four times and I answered it the same manner. So no matter how many times, okay, no matter how many times they try to come back and come back and come back and distract you and pull you away from what God said you're supposed to be doing, you have to remain in a position to say, no, I meant what I said. No, not allowing whoever it is, the people, no matter what they're saying, because I'm pretty sure they came back four times and they came back four times with a different um, excuse, a different way of presenting it to make it more appealing OK, to even make it seem like there's something that you are going to get out of it. So make sure that you recognize that there will be those that are persistent in bringing distraction to stop the finishing work of God and your assignment. Even if the person doesn't mean you harm. OK, the spirit operating through them does. And we have to remember that. Whenever there are certain people, it could be people that are close to us. We don't want to believe that the people that are close to us want to do us harm. It is not them, though. It is the spirit that is operating through them that desires to see God's work not reach a finishing point. Okay. The key here is that Nehemiah was about God's business and remaining stern in his answers to not be swayed by outsiders that are on assignment from the enemy. Also in the midst of this, we have to remember the fruit of the spirit, which is long suffering. Okay. So many of God's people, that is one fruit of the spirit that many of us struggle with is long suffering. And its root means to put fury far off while suffering wrong or injustice. So even when you are suffering wrong or injustice to put fury far off from you, no matter what, you have to keep pushing and it's not going to be easy. And when it comes to anger, okay, we need to understand the right answer to inappropriate anger. 
there are going to be certain situations or people that may try to bring us into a space where we are responding in anger, responding in anger and allowing those emotions to rise up. Okay. Cause the word says, I'm quoting this. So I'm not quoting this. Is it? I meant to say, I'm putting this in my own words. Okay. Um, but the word says, be angry, but don't sin. Or basically allow yourself to, you, it's okay to recognize and feel the emotion of being angry, to, but don't allow that anger to cause you to sin, okay? <laughs> also, there are many of you who are being put into position um, or increase, your position is being increased to be a prophet, okay? Um, and there's a lot of people I'm still learning in reference to when it comes to this, but People are like, well, I thought you're supposed to be born as a prophet. You are born as a prophet, but the Lord um, may not have given you understanding of what your calling was until it was time for you to operate in it. So everything that you've gone through your whole life, it was to train, to prune, to um, bring you to a certain position to exactly where you are right now so that you can... Um, Because there are some people that can actually feel or um, understand what their calling is when they're a hellion and it'd be used for, for bad, which that does happen at times, but God has a plan, okay? So for many of you, you don't realize that your calling is prophetic. There's a difference between being prophetic and being called as a prophet. So without going too deep into this, there are many that will uh, God will begin to reveal to you that you are called as a prophet. There is currently judgment that is being called out um, on the wicked. And this is where we are right now. Okay. I wrote this down, but I do not remember. Uh, I didn't write down where I got it from. Okay. Judgment on the wicked leaders. God executed judgment and killed the wicked counselor. So there are, there is judgment as judgment comes, God starts in his house first. Okay, so there are a lot of people that are in certain positions that are not operating and stewarding his sheep properly. And so that judgment is coming upon them first. Okay, now this also goes as well for those who are leaders, even if they're not believers in Christ. And an example, a good example of that is Nebuchadnezzar when he was humiliated in Daniel 4, verse 28 through 33, where he goes and he looks out amongst Babylon and he almost boasts in um, what he created and what he built, okay? And then he was quickly reminded by the Spirit of God that everything that you think here that you built, you're about to lose, and you will have that position no more. And now you will know that God is in control of who has power over these kingdoms. Okay. So that is what is happening. What is taking place right now for those people who are in certain leadership and positions and whether they are believers in Christ who have certain positions or not. And they have this mindset of, um, idolizing themselves and the work that they've done or just not giving any uh, reverence to how they even got there, okay? And God taken away. Like you, you look at this as if this is something you built on your own with your own power, your own might. I'm gonna show you that I'm in control, okay? So that is what is taking place right now. And then he showed me the polluted offerings. So in reference to those who are believers in Christ, but are offering polluted offerings, this is in Malachi 1.6. When I read up on that, um, polluted offerings back in scripture is when they talked about how they would bring the animals, okay, as a sacrifice. But these sacrifices or these animals were polluted. They were diseased. And he basically uh, was stating, would you give a polluted gift or offering to your governor or a family member or a friend, okay? Would you, if you were going to, let's just say, um, 
you wanted to give a, a gift, you know, birthday gift, a thank you gift, whatever, to your parents. And you got something out of the dumpster that somebody else had thrown away. Your parents would not be pleased that you gave absolutely no thought and no respect to the gift that you were giving them. And so this is what this is like when it comes to um, people that were giving polluted offerings to God. They were giving or sacrificing animals that were blind, sacrificing animals that were diseased. When the animals that you sacrificed to the Lord were supposed to be pure, uh, healthy animals, okay? And so in turn, in reference to us, the same way that's done is where we are worshiping God without understanding, where we're worshiping the Lord um, without respect in the same sense, okay? Um, there's so much to this, but it's basically the people who had no respect for the Lord and did not reverence him in a nutshell. And in Mark 4, 21, light under a basket. This is um, basically for there is nothing hidden is what it states. There is nothing hidden which will not be revealed, nor has anything been kept secret, but that it should come to light. So there is a lot of um, things being uncovered, a lot of things being revealed, these things are happening. This is a part of the judgment that is taking place on, on across the board, okay? And as these things are beginning to become revealed, the disciples' eyes are being opened, okay? So if you are a believer in Christ and you feel as though there are certain things that you don't understand from a spiritual space, begin to allow that to be your prayer, Father God, open my eyes spiritually. Allow me to be able to um, see and understand what is happening in the spirit. Allow me to also, as I open your word, you know, my understanding being opened. As I read your word, you being able to speak to me through your word and for my understanding to be increased. Okay, let's definitely always keep that as a part of our prayer. That is important. OK, and I think um, last but not least, God is saying live as you are called, live as you are called. First Corinthians 7, 17, celibacy, circumcision and freedom were no more or less spiritual than marriage, uncircumcision, uncircumcision and slavery. Paul was concerned that the Corinthians not seek change as though it had spiritual significance, which it did not. OK, so, you know, how there are some people who believe that, oh, because I am, you know, celibate or I'm abstinent and I'm living this type of way or I'm married. That means that I have a there's a bigger you know spiritual significance in those things, which there is not. OK, and last lastly, the whole armor of God, the whole armor of God, uh, Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. We need to always put on the full armor of God, especially if we are called in ministry or we're called to teach the word, we're called to make disciples. Put on the armor of God every day while you're teaching, while you're operating, even if you're not teaching, but while you are operating in your calling, put on the full armor of God on a daily basis, okay? And that is all I have for you guys today. I love you and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye.